In this video I'm going to show you how to use the Cyberpunk Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open up your photo and you just play the action. And here's the effect that the action creates. So the action transforms your photo into the Cyberpunk effect photos and um, the results that you get are fully layered so you can customize the results after the action is finished as you like. Alright, so I'm just gonna close down this window. So when you open up your photo, before you use the action, there are just a few things you should check just to make sure that uh, the action will run without any errors and that you'll get the best results. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is a background layer. So it should be called background. You have this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to layer, new, and choose a background from layer. Then click on this menu icon right here and just choose the panel options and make sure that the add copy to copy layer is groups is checked. Then go to the image mode and make sure for this the RGB color mode 8 bit canon. You can also check the image size from here. So for best results you should use the images that are run from 20 to 40, 4500 pixels wide or high. Okay. And what you need to do now is just go to window actions to open up the actions panel, then just click on the menu icon right here, choose load actions, and just choose the action from the folder according to your Photoshop version. Select the action file, click load, and the action will appear here in your actions panel, and when you open up the folder, you'll find the action here. So all you have to do now is just select the action inside the folder and click play. And the actual process pretty fast, but I'm going to fast the video here, and uh, I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished, and then I'm going to go through a total layers to show you how each layer works, side effects the design, and how can you customize it. Alright, so the action has just finished, so what I'm going to do is just gonna close this actions panel and I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel. Alright, so what you can do to just close uh, these folders here is to just hold control and down buttons for PC or command option for Mac and just click on this little arrow here while this folder is selected and close down if you have any folders here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start customizing this effect from the bottom. Alright, so the first layer we've got here is the original for the layer or the background layer. And the next layer we got here is the base adjustment layer. So what this layer does, if you click on this arrow here, uh, you will see that we got some uh, smart filters added here. So what you can do is you can edit these filters. You can just double click on this filter, choose OK. And now you can just make any changes here if you like. So to adjust the uh, reduce noise filter. So if you have the preview option here checked, you can immediately see the difference. Um, so you can uh, set up the strength here, if you wish to reduce, the, uh, this is the strength of the reducing noise, so you can just increase it if you wish to reduce noise even more. Uh, with the preserve details option you can just keep some details, uh, keep more details of your photo, you can see the difference. Alright, and here we got the reduce color noise option. And lastly, we got the sharpen details option. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this option default. So I'm just going to choose cancel. And the next filter that we got here is the shadows and highlights filters. So I'm just going to double-click there. All right. So what you can do here, you can increase the amount of shadows to reveal more details in those areas, or simply to increase the highlights. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is just going to drop down the shadows a little bit, maybe increase the highlights. You can choose more options here if you wish to make more detailed adjustments of the shadows and highlights. Alright, and just going to choose OK. So with this layer you can reveal a lot of details in the dark areas of your photo. And what we got here next is the photo tint layer. This layer is going to make uh, a lot of lighting to the photo. It's going to boost basically all the lights, as you can see. So what you can do is you can double click here on the thumbnail of this layer and you can change the density of this layer. 
as you increase the density you're going to get more of the cyan color and also you're going to boost the highlights even more I'm just gonna set it like this and the next layer we got here is the increase exposure layer All right so it's gonna double click here and here using this slider here you can adjust the exposure as you like okay I'm gonna leave the other settings default right so you can experiment with the other settings as well but mostly you're going to probably use just the exposure here and what we got next here is the low contrast layer so what this layer does is going to lower the contrast of the photo and what you can do is you can double click here and you can adjust the contrast with the slider over there or you can simply drop down the opacity of this layer so for each layer that you customize by changing the opacity you can either click on the word opacity and drag it aside like this or you can click on this little arrow here and then move this slider around All right and this layer here at the boost shadows highlights is going to basically uh, give more contrast to the photo by boosting the shadows and highlights of your photo okay so what you can do here is you can make some specific adjustments but you can just change down the opacity here if you wish to drop down the contrast All right so when you have these two layers shown at the same time they won't make much of a difference but the thing is that you can just turn on this one and then you can lower the contrast with this layer or you can simply boost the contrast with this layer All right or you can just change the opacity of this layer to find a perfect contrast of your photo and the perfect highlights and shadows intensity so the next one we got here is the color look layer so this layer is basically uh, giving the, all these colors here and when you open up the folder you will see that we got uh, three adjustment layers here for this color so the first layer here is going to make a base color adjustment uh, what you can do is you can double click here and you can change the values here right so when you choose the reds uh, here in the panel you're now just affecting the red colors in your photo so you can here choose the hue of the color that you wish to turn red into and uh, here you can choose the saturation of that new color and the lightness right and you can do the same thing for any of those colors or you can simply use these default settings and sometimes you can try to play with the opacity here all right and just gonna turn on this one layer so this layer here is just going to make another color adjustment and the same as with this one here you can make specific adjustments here if you like what you can also do is you can play with the opacity to give a different color look and last we're going to turn on this one here all right so this is a different adjustment layer uh, here you can affect the shadows the midtones or the highlights of your photo separately so you can adjust them basically as you like just by moving these sliders around okay i'm gonna keep this default and what I'm going to do is you can just change the opacity of this layer here All right sometimes you will need to use a more a lower opacity it all depends on the photo and the effect that you wish to achieve so you can just change the opacity of this layer to just as you like okay and the next layer we got here is the overall contrast so how you adjust the contrast is you just change the opacity of this layer here so I'm just going to set it at 100% and the next what we got here is the overall vibrance and saturation layer so you just double click here and now you can adjust the vibrance and saturation using these two sliders okay 
just going to boost the saturation a little bit, just like that. All right, and the next one we got here is the overall brightness layer. So just double click on the layer thumbnail. And by default, this layer is going to boost a little bit uh, the shadows of your photo. So you can use this slider to boost the shadows of your photo. And with this one here, you can boost the highlights if you like. And with this one, the middle slider here, uh, this one is affecting the mid-tones of your photo. Okay. With this one here, you can fade the shadows of your photo or you can fade the highlights of your photo with this one here. Okay, I'm just going to boost the shadows just a little bit. Alright. And the next one we got here are the two sharpening layers, the hard and fine sharpening. So the hard sharpening is going to just um, increase the visibility of the larger details in your photo. So how you adjust the sharpening is you just change the opacity of this layer. So when you change it from 0 to 100%, you can clearly see how this layer affects the design. Okay, and the fine sharpening layer is just going to sharpen the small details in your photo. I'm going to keep it at 100%. And the next layer we got here is the Boost Highlights layer. Okay, so basically this layer is just going to boost all the lights in your photo. And what you can do is you can change the opacity of this layer to adjust the highlights as you like. Alright, so as you can see it's not just boosting the highlights as you would do with the brightness layer. It also creates this glow effect. So it's basically increasing the glow of all the lights in your photo. I'm going to use a lower value here. And lastly, what we got here is the add vignette layer. So you're going to add this shadow uh, around uh, on the corners of your photo. And what you can do is you can change the opacity of this layer if you like. Okay. Or if you can simply turn, um, remove this layer by setting the opacity to 0%, or you can just hide the layer here if you don't wish to use this effect. I'm just going to keep it default here like that. Alright, so let's just quickly now check the before and after effect. Right, so this is the before and this is the after effect. Alright, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. Thanks for watching.